Hello, and welcome back. This is Renegade Gamer. We're playing Xenosaga, Episode 1, The Will to Make. Um, our last episode, we explored uh, Kukai Foundation. And uh, then we heard a little bit of talk of... Uh, Milsha. Between Markless and come Albedo. I back under these situations. Chief, is something wrong? Huh? Uh, oh, no. It's uh, nothing. How's that, Cosmos? He's a terrible liar. Fine. There are no problems. Please continue. And once again, it's nothing. Anytime a lady says that, it's something. <laughs> we Sorry. will soon be Being entering the Milshan uh, star system. And the force has We will be entering orbit at 1400 hours local time. Second Milsha Spaceport Flight Control, transmitting flight plan, requesting permission to dock. Hey, Momo! Yes? What is it? We'll be going our separate ways once we get to Second Milsha, right? Yes. I don't know if Reallians believe in carrying charms or not, but... Here, take this. It's for luck. So pretty. What is it? It's a bullet from a long time ago. Look, it's got a good luck phrase on it. Sayonara, baby. Thank you. I'll keep it safe. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. There we go. Try it on. Wow! You can do things like that too? That's wonderful! It kind of tires me out a bit though. What a strange nice welcome! Listening. Are they escorting us in this time? They're blocking the way? <laughs> this is no welcome. As you can see from this video, the Kukai Foundation has engaged in what is clearly an act of aggression against the 117th Marine Division. From the events that followed, we can only come to the conclusion that this was an act of rebellion orchestrated by the Foundation's creators, the Second Milshan Government. In light of these troubling events, we hereby enter a motion for the following. Per Article 104, an emergency suspension of the vested rights of Second Milsha's autonomous government. I'd like to add that the 422nd Fleet from Gedalia has been dispatched to the scene in order to surround and contain both the Kukai Foundation and Second Milsha. <laughs> Hold on there. Won't that constitute an unauthorized use of force? The deployment is in accordance with the Federation Emergency Powers Act. It is fully within our powers. I would think that the Kukai Foundation possessing that level of weaponry is a far greater problem in and of itself. Perhaps they were heroes during the conflict, or whatever in the past. But the current situation is a result of letting them have their way for so long. The Zohar belonged to the entire Federation. Why should Second Milsha have sole control? The decision to turn the artifacts of old Milsha over to an impartial third party was decided by vote 14 years ago. We're talking about the dangers of it being monopolized by a corporation. The Kukai Foundation was converted after the completion of the post-war cleanup and their own disarmament. 
Since taking on their current name and converting to a business, their primary source of income has become entertainment and tourism. How could they possibly have a vested interest in the Zohar? You call that disarmed? It's just enough for self-defense. Think back to the reason the organization was formed. Not only that, we can't ignore their recent achievements against the Gnosis. Can we be certain these accusations aren't merely jealousy on the part of a state that didn't receive post-war government handouts? How dare you! I've heard rumors that Milsha was secretly involved not only with the current planetary disappearance case, but also with other recent developments, including the Anti-Gnosis Sohar project. I'd like to hear the contact subcommittee's thoughts on all this. Dr. Mizrahi? We moved the 100 series Realian to second Milsha in accordance with the original plan. We're following the protocols. But I wonder... Have you forgotten that it was Milsha that produced the lunatic that summoned the Gnosis and tried to destroy the Federation? I sympathize with your desire to defend your late husband, but... Perhaps you are too deeply involved in this situation. I would not have expected my presence here to be misconstrued in such a manner. Oh, really? That this is just nothing to do that earlier. Policy. You must have the Federation if you continue! Jealousy on the part of the state, that's all this Order! Order! We've just patched in with Representative Helmer. I'd like to hear about the situation from the second Milshan government. Well, Representative Helmer? In accordance with Federation law, we hereby place the Kokai Foundation under arrest for the suspicion of violating Article 798, Chapter 37, Collection and Concealment of Defense Information, and Article 2153, Chapter 105, Acts of Aggression Against Federation Vessels, and hereby revoke all rights previously granted. Shut down your engines and relinquish your weapons immediately. Acts of Aggression Against Federation Vessels? Furthermore, should the Milshan government allow the Kukai Foundation to dock the Durandal, we will issue a state of emergency notice under Article 2384, Chapter 115, Part 18, Conspiracy what in the world to is Aid going Insurrection. On? It looks like they think the Durandal conspired with the Milshan government in an attack on the Federation fleet. Huh? What Federation fleet? Hey, check out the network news on the sub-monitor! You're not gonna believe this! On the morning of the 21st, it appears that the 177th Marine Division flagship Waglinde of the Galaxy Federation's Tessadora Division came under attack by a heavily armed ship belonging to the Kukai Foundation. The Waglinde? What? I thought the Gnosis attack had been reported already. The company has been identified as operating in conjunction with the 2nd Milshan Gov considerations for the possibility of treason have forced the Federation Parliament to dispatch... They did a good job doctoring that video. But how did they synchronize the battle coordinates as well? Damn! That's from when we fought the UTIC organization! Those bastards were recording it! I see. That would explain how the absolute coordinates match. I guess that's their indisputable proof. Even I'm starting to think that we did it. Considering the situation, you don't sound very worried. In any event, this is confirmation that the remnants of the UTIC organization have infiltrated both the Federation government and the military. Which means, their next target is... This is such a blatant lie, it's ludicrous! As survivors, if we testify... They'll just claim that you survived because you were in on the conspiracy. This is insane! Do you think this is why Headquarters hasn't communicated with us? Perhaps? So many conflicts in this game. So many conflicts. And I know a lot of questions. Ah, uh, here we go. I am Captain Lapis Roman of the Galaxy Federation Special Ops Command Headquarters, Intelligence Bureau. 
I hereby place this ship under custody of the Galaxy Federation. I understand you're from the Woglinde. I'll take you in as witnesses. All Vector property will be temporarily confiscated as evidence. Cosmos! Here's the 100 series Realian under warrant. Hey, don't hurt her! Detain them in a single room and watch them carefully. All of them? Splitting them up will only serve to underman our guard posts. Investigate as much of the ship as possible before we rendezvous with the others. Yes, ma'am! Gainan Kukai, you are hereby under arrest for suspicion of treason against the Galaxy Federation. Come with me. As you wish. It's all orchestrated too well. Huh? The fleet deployment came too quickly. They must have been prepared to ensure that Momo would return to them, regardless of what happened. Or perhaps ensnaring second Milsha was part of their plan from the very beginning. As a neutral territory, second Milsha was invested with a whole bunch of rights and legal privileges after the Milshan conflict. There are a whole lot of folks who still have problems with that. Even outside of the UTIC organization. The asteroid where Momo was imprisoned. I wondered where the information about that place came from. Now it seems like it was all part of the plan from the very beginning. Do you mean from when Mommy sent you to rescue me? You don't think there are UTIC members within the subcommittee itself? It's not inconceivable. Perhaps it was the very person who arranged for Momo's rescue. Dr. Yuri Mizrahi herself. No! Mommy would never do something like that! Alan! I, uh... Sorry. Alan, 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 Alan. Careful what you say, man. So, right now we're up Shit's Creek. Open it. Without a paddle. Elmer? Sorry to keep you waiting, Guinan. I'm in a somewhat difficult position myself at the moment, but I'm doing what I can with the Federation Parliament. Now the woman beside you is Captain Lapis Roman. Several years ago, I sent her to infiltrate the military in order to keep tabs on the UTIC members within it. She is one of my most trusted subordinates. Always prepared, aren't you? Caution is something that comes naturally with age. Captain Roman will investigate the Durandal's records before someone modifies them. Please assist her. Understood. I'll give her the Durandal's master key. Sir. There's an EPR com from the CEO of Vector. Vector? All right, I'll take it. If you'll excuse me, I'll let you know if there are any developments. Busy as always. Not half as much as you. It's good to see you again, Representative Helmer. Likewise, Mr. Wilhelm. We haven't spoken since you resigned as Executive Committee Director. I'm well aware of the situation. Allow me to make a recommendation to the Parliament as well. Mr. Wilhelm, you're too kind. <coughs> Actually, my concerns have even prompted me to dispatch the Damarung, which is currently underway to the Milshan system. Your concerns? This incident. Surely you've realized by now that... There's no question of the UTIC organization's involvement in it. Exactly. Given that, it can only mean they're after one thing. The original Zohar in stasis on Milsha, and... Udu. We can't allow that to be awakened again. 
I believe our firm's Cosmos and its related staff are currently in your care. I apologize, Mr. Wilhelm. I'm afraid the link between the Kukai Foundation and the Second Milchen government is... Ah, of course. Then please pass a message on to Guinan for me. Surely that would be acceptable? That much I can do. Tell him that we'll lend him Cosmos for a while, and he can use her as he sees fit. We still have time before the Zohar project commences, and in the worst case scenario, she'll definitely be of use. We'll have the second R&D division and the tactical sim lab provide support. Are you sure? Isn't that top secret? It's a calculated risk. From our point of view, the more real-world data we get, the better. All right. I'll convey your message to Master Guinan. Thank you. Good day, then. Voodoo. The preliminary inquiry <coughs> shall now begin. I am an agent working for Representative Helmer of the Second Milchen Parliament. He's also with us. We can go into detail later, but for now I'll just debrief you on the current situation. You are presently under the custody of the Federation government and the military. I'll be honest with you. The way things are now, within a few hours, she'll be turned over to anti-Milchen forces, specifically the Utic organization. Soon after, the second Milchen government will be stripped of all its authority. At this moment, Representative Helmer is working with the leaders of the Milchen parliament to buy us additional time. However, our opponent's skillful manipulation requires us to find concrete proof of your innocence. But how? That's the question. We need something that would give conclusive evidence of your innocence. Conclusive evidence? What about the Woglinde's black box? We've already recovered that. Unfortunately, sometime after the final gate out, it was modified to be exactly the same as the video recording down to the time access. Not to mention, I shot up the database on that UTIC battleship. What about the Durandal's database? A record of the battle against the UTIC should still be there. Can't we use that to prove our innocence? Is that a standard database? Yeah. Ah. Is that a problem? Yes. Standard databases are too easily modified. I'm not certain how reliable they would be as evidence. If we had something that even the owner couldn't change, say, a system with a AAA-class encryption, then maybe... What? AAA? You don't find systems with that kind of protection just lying around? Or something like that. You need the Federation government's mother frame, or the UMN operating system. We... What? We have one. Oh. Cosmos. Cosmos? Yes. Cosmos database has a recording of the battle against the Gnosis on board the Woglinde. If we enter that as evidence... Yeah, but in order to copy the record, we need the keys from both the Federation government and headquarters. By diving into the Encephalon and experiencing the record ourselves, we can make a copy through the connection gear. Uh, but that's impossible without the dive equipment. How about the service module simple dive unit? You've got to be kidding. Besides, that's a violation of protocol. We don't have any other choice, do we? Oh, I am so sick and tired of protocol. But... The real question is, how do we get to Cosmos? That'll open any locked doors you come across. I'll just say that we were careless. But to make it look legitimate, you'll need to knock me out. You sure? Otherwise, no one would believe it, right?
You have a point. Go easy on me, okay? Forgive me. Thanks. You're pretty cool. <laughs> Why is it only chaos? Oh, because I don't have any weapons. That makes sense. No, it doesn't, because Ziggy can fight without weapons. Because he doesn't need weapons. Okay. Alright, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I guess. Uh, Ziggy doesn't require weapons. I don't know why the hell. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I guess the first thing I gotta do. Oh, I don't even have a connection gear. I'm about to figure out where my weapons are. Set up. Cowboy hat. Throw a space helmet on you for now. Also change your wet ammo and your gun. Ah, we'll keep the gun. You, on the other hand, need to change your weapons. Yeah, we'll take one of those. 
so I can always uh, learn stuff off of it. Got, got, oh, don't have. Okay. I thought I bought, oh, I do have these, okay. Battle formation. Junior, you can stay. Uh, Chaos, you can stay. Shion, I am going to trade you out for a change. I'm going to give Momo a little fighting time here because I've actually done anything with her in a while. So, and I need to get her skills up a little bit. So, I guess we gotta make our way towards the Elsa. And then from there, uh, we start my second least favorite dungeon in the game. <laughs> Yeah, I literally haven't used Momo in a, quite some time, so I'm going to have to build her up a little bit. Please stand down. I don't want meaningless bloodshed. That's what I was talking about earlier uh, uh, with Junior. He's just really good. <laughs> yeah. Much against the mix. Got it.
All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right here. Uh, I th think there's a save point here. I think. You look like you're in a bind. If you want, I can help you. You can? Yes. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here. And, uh, I'm going to go grind a little bit off of some of these enemies. Because I want to get, uh, a few things taken care of. Um, before the next section. Um, anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I know this was very cutscene heavy. Uh, this is a very cutscene heavy game, though, so there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, the entire next section is a huge dungeon. I guarantee it's going to take at least probably about two and a half hours to get through. It's just a long, dawning section of game. Uh, there's a lot that goes on there. The fights are a little bit long. And uh, the cutscenes tend to be quite long there as well. I'll try to make it as quick as possible, but it's going to require me to do a little bit of grinding and uh, getting getting a couple of things set up before I get there. And even then, it's not even 100% that I'll be able to pull off uh, everything pretty quickly. Uh, plus, I don't remember my way through that dungeon quite that well, so... Um, We'll see. In the meantime, I uh, hope you all have a good day. Uh, y'all take it easy, and I'll catch you in the next episode. This is Renegade Gamer, and I am signing out.